from the Blair Congregational Church in Blair, Nebraska. Pastor Jim here with you today, back coming you through the internet once more, keeping everybody safe, because we want to make sure everybody is safe during this COVID period. Today is our second Sunday in Advent. We'll be having another Advent candle lit very shortly. We welcome you to our service today. Please be sure to check our website and our Facebook page for all the happenings of the church, things that are out there. These recordings are there also for you to enjoy along with our Christmas caroling that will be there and our Thanksgiving music will be there for you also. So this morning as we start our time of worship, let's begin with our call to worship, which is number 122 in our hymnals today. Who shall come in the fullness of time to gladden the hearts of men? Who shall bring new joy to the world, and the poor and the lonely defend? Who shall come on a cold winter's night, when the world is hushed and still? Only the silent stars keep watch, as a promise is fulfilled. Just as a child newly born, he shall come to a stable rough with sod. Tis gentle Jesus, Prince of Peace, the blessed Son of God. We await him with reverent hearts. O come, Lord Jesus, come. And please join together this morning in our opening hymn, hymn number 123, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verse number 1. Courage to wait in times of pain and trouble. 
Give us the compassion to wait for one another. Give us the faith to wait for the Messiah when we are threatened by the errors of this world. Give us the hope to wait for the Savior even when we cannot hear the angels sing. Give us the love that does not wait when it meets Christ in our neighbor. Amen. during this time through COVID, during this time when we're online, we thank each and every one of you. And shall we take a moment of prayer? Father, we thank you for these opportunities to give, to give in the continuing of the building of your kingdom here on earth. Bless our offerings that we send in, and bless us as the good stewards of all that you give. In your most holy name we pray this morning. Amen. Our first reading this morning is Isaiah 61, 1 through 4, 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to point unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall know the old wastes, they shall raise up the former desolations, they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love judgment, I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, and they are the seed, that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my soul shall be joyful in God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornament and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth, causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Now I'm going to invite all who wish to please stand for this morning's Gospel reading. And this morning, our Gospel reading will be from the Gospel of Mark. We'll be in the first chapter, beginning with the first verse, and we'll hear about John the Baptist preparing the way. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Now everybody can please be seated if you wish. Years ago, there was a very wealthy man who, with his devoted young son, shared a passion for art collecting. 
Together they traveled around the world, adding only the finest artist treasures to their collection. They owned priceless works by Picasso, Van Gogh, Rembrandt, Monet, and many others that adorned the walls of their family estate. They traveled the world attending art shows and auctions together. The widowed elder man looked on with satisfaction as his only child became an experienced art collector. The son's trained eye and sharp business mind caused his father to beam with pride as they dealt with art collectors from around the world. But things soon changed for the young man as the country went to war. War engulfed the nation. The son was drafted and left to serve his country. The father anxiously waited day after day to hear from his son after he was sent overseas to the war front, but a letter never came. After a period of some weeks, his father received a telegram. His beloved son was missing in action. The old man anxiously awaited more news, heartbroken and fearful that he would never see his son again. Within days after receiving the telegram, there came a knock at the front door. As he opened the door, there stood a soldier at attention. The soldier informed him that his worst fear was now confirmed. Under heavy enemy fire, his beloved son had rescued a fellow soldier that was wounded, pulling him out of harm's way, and was trying to get him to safety. He was trying to reach a medic to care for the man's wounds. In risking his life to save the man, he had exposed himself to heavy enemy fire. Even though he was able to get the wounded soldier to safety, the wounds he received as a result were to sever him from surviving and he died, shot through the heart. The old man stood in silence for a moment. His heart sank in his chest, and then he slowly closed the door. Distraught and lonely, the old man faced the upcoming Christmas holidays with anguish and sadness. The joy of the season, a season that he and his son had looked so forward to, would no longer visit his house. On Christmas morning, a knock on the door awakened the depressed old man. As he walked to the door, he walked by all the masterpieces by Picasso, Van Gogh, and Monet on those walls as he walked the hallway. They only reminded him that his son was not coming home, and they would never share their love of art together again. As he opened the door, he was greeted by another soldier. The soldier had a large package in his hands. He introduced himself to the man by saying, Sir, I was a friend of your son. I was severely wounded in battle. I was trapped. Your son risked his lone life, came and rescued me. If not for him, I would have perished. I am the one who was rescuing when he died. The old man stood still, tears in his eyes, and looked at the younger man. And he asked him, so you knew my son? Yes, indicated the soldier, I knew him well. Then the soldier said to the heartbroken father, may I come in for a few moments? I have something for you. Yes, yes, please come in, said the old man. And as the two began to talk, the soldier told the old man how his son would always tell stories to all of his friends of he and his father's love of fine art. I'm definitely not a great artist, said the soldier, as he handed the man the package. But I painted this myself, and I wanted you to have it. As the old man unwrapped the package, the paper gave way to show a portrait of the old man's son. Though the world would never consider it a work of a genius, or even that of a decent artist, the painting, the painting featured the young man's face in striking detail. Overcome with emotion, the man thanked the soldier, promising to hang the picture in the place of honor, above the fireplace. A few hours later, after the soldier had departed, the old man set about his task. True to his word, the painting went above the fireplace. He pushed aside hundreds of thousands of dollars of paintings, and he put the picture of his son in their most promising place. Then the man sat in his chair and spent Christmas gazing at the gift he had been given. 
During the days and weeks that followed, the old man realized that even though his son was no longer with him, the boy's life would live on because of the lives he had touched. He would sit and watch the scene where a son gave his life in sacrifice to save another through the painting. As the stories of his son's gallantry continued to reach him, the old man's fatherly pride and satisfaction began to ease the grief and heartache that he had been suffering. The painting of his son soon became his most prized possession, far eclipsing any interest in the pieces for which museums around the world would pay dearly for and collections clamor for. He told his friends and neighbors it was the greatest gift he had ever received. The following spring, the old man became ill and passed away. With, with the collector's passing and his only son dead, the press released a story that his precious art collection, worth many tens of millions of dollars, would be sold at auction. The art world was excited in anticipation. According to the will of the old man, all the artworks would be auctioned on Christmas Day, the day he had received the greatest gift, the gift of the painting from the once wounded soldier that had been saved by his son. The day soon arrived, and art collectors from around the world gathered to bid on some of the world's most spectacular paintings. Dreams would be fulfilled this day. Greatness would be achieved, as many would claim, I have the world's greatest painting, or I have the greatest collection of paintings in the world. The auction began with a painting simply titled, The Sun. It was a painting that was not in any museum's list, or on the list of any of the buyers that were there. Those in it, it was a painting of the old man's son. Those in attendance looked in bewilderment. What kind of joke is this, they wondered. The painting is obviously of no value. They said amongst themselves. The auctioneer asked for an opening bid. The room was silent. Who will open the bidding with $100 for this painting, he asked. Minutes passed. No one spoke. From all around the room, of the shouts came. Who cares about that painting? It's just a picture of the sun. Let's forget about it and go on to the good stuff. No one here is interested in that. More voices echoed in agreement. No, we have to sell this one first, replied the auctioneer. And the auction resumed. Now who will bid on this picture, said the auctioneer. Finally, sitting in the back row at the far end of the room, a friend of the old man stood up and spoke. I'm not a rich man, and I don't have much to offer. The father was a friend of mine, and I knew the boy. I would love to have it. It would mean so very much to me. Will you take $10 for the painting? That's all I have. I have $10. Who will go any higher, asked the auctioneer. After more silence, the auctioneer said again, I have $10. Will anyone go higher? No one else bid on the painting. Going once, going twice, sold for $10 to the gentleman in the back row. Please see the cashier, said the auctioneer. And the gavel fell. Cheers filled the room and someone finally exclaimed, now we can get on with it and we can bid on those treasures of artwork. The auctioneer looked at the audience and announced, the auction was over. Stunned disbelief at first quiet in the room. Then from all around the room there was yelling in confusion. They were all saying, what do you mean it's over? We didn't come here for a picture of some old guy's son. We demand you explain what's going on here. And the auctioneer replied, it's very simple. According to the will of the father, whoever takes the son gets it all. We have been given that gift of the Son, God's Son, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Gospel of John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. As we move through the Advent season this year, in our second week now, may we have Jesus 
and let him enter into our lives, even more so than before, further and further into our beings, to be with him more than before, to learn from him, to learn more about him, to be a closer follower of his. And may we always take the Son, the one who came into our world, the one who did what it took for each and every one of us, guaranteeing our futures with his Father God in heaven. Let us hold him even close in our hearts this Christmas season. Take the Son. God loves you. Amen. And this morning, as we become our church in time of prayer, Let's take a time for silent prayer, prayer directly to God, who always listens, always listening to hear from us, who's always there and always will be there. Father, we come to you this morning in praise and thanksgiving of the coming of your Son, the celebration of his birth. We thank you so much for these opportunities to learn, to grow, to become closer, and to understand Jesus in our lives even more. We thank you for the beauty of the season, the beauty of our decorations, the beauty of the joy of that baby born in the stable. We thank you for the wonderful gift you sent to us, the gift of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we know we come to you in our prayers. We know, as we just came to you in our silent prayers, we lift those up to you this morning. And Lord, we do have concerns that we lift up to you. We lift up those, Lord, who are going through tough times, who are struggling during this time of COVID. We pray for those, Lord, who have contracted COVID, that you be with them and comfort them as they go through this hideous disease. We ask your blessings upon the caretakers, the ones who are there and are always there, taking care of others and helping them get through these things. We ask you to bless them and keep them safe as they go forward through this time. Father, we pray for those who have no voice, that will always be a voice for them. We pray for those, Lord, whose prayers are known only to you. That you always hear them and let those folks know that you're there and things will be okay. We pray for those, Lord, suffering in silence. The ones whose prayers are known only to you. Be with each and every one of them as you are with us. And Lord, we lift up our joys this morning also. The joy of this time together, the joy of the season, the joy of the beauty of our Christmas time. We thank you for these opportunities. We thank you for the beauty of the songs we get to sing, the lights and the colors and all that we get to see. We thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, because we do take the Son. We do accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We do want to be closer to him and learn more about him and become closer to you through knowing him. We thank you for all of those things, all of those opportunities. And Lord, we thank you for what Jesus left to us, the prayer that we now pray to you together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. sacrament of communion. If you have your communion elements, please have them ready to go and have them near you. 
And this morning we start out our Sacrament of Holy Communion with a Nativity prayer in number 126. Shall we take just a moment of prayer? Father, we ask you to be with us today as we gather at the table that your Son has set. We ask you for the forgiveness of our sins, the sins we lift up to you in our prayers today. Be with us today, and be with us always as we celebrate your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, through his remembrance at the communion table. So as while he was at that table with his disciples, that he took the bread into his hands. And after giving thanks and praise, he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. And in the same way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And again, after giving thanks and praise, he gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink. This is the blood, the blood of the new covenant for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come again in glory. Ministering to you in the name of Jesus Christ, Come, for all things are prepared. The blood of Christ for you, take and drink. And our prayer of thanksgiving this morning. All praise is yours, O God. You bring us to this table as sisters and brothers. Lead us now through each of our moments to that glorious day when all your children will gather as family. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our peace made flesh. Amen. And now please enjoy our closing hymn, hymn number 137. What child is this? Verse number one. be closer to him and to God than ever before by welcoming him to our world even more. Take the Son. Be with him. Be closer to God. And may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you today and every day of your life.
Again, we want to thank each and every one of you for being with us today, staying safe in your homes, being safe as we go forward. We look forward to seeing you next week for our third week of Advent, where we'll have a special youth-included service. God bless, and we'll see you next week.